So let me jump right into the topic, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and before I do that, don't forget my book, Foundational Black American Race Bader, available right now on Amazon. You can get Race Bader right now on Amazon. Phenomenal book, a lot of good game in it if you want to step your game up and understand racial politics and how to maneuver and deal with that system. But the question for the evening, ladies and gentlemen, we hear the term black and brown. We hear it a lot. And there's many reasons why we hear that term. There's a socio-political reason why that term is really promoted a lot. So my question is to black folks, I want to talk to black people in particular. Why do you use that term? I know a lot of black people still use the term black and brown. And I want to see some of the people in the room here. Are there any black people here in the room that still use the term black and brown? If you use the term black and brown, raise your hand. I would like to talk to you just to ask you, why do you use that term still? I would like to see some brothers and sisters in the room. Raise your hand. If you use the term black and brown, okay, no, you're a white supremacist, man. You, you, you don't count. And let me get him in here real quick. Let me get the white supremacists out the way. What's up, Pang? Yeah, I still use the term black and brown. I but find you, it more like... But, you, but aren't you a white supremacist suspect? No. What are you? What do you mean, what am I? I'm a uh, human being. I don't, yeah. I don't really like... I don't know. Uh, you could tell if I was a white supremacist. That's all I'm going to say. Because you call here with that weak trolling all the time. Nope. Yes, you, you do. You can smell the wet dog off me. That's why. There so you, you go. you know I'm white supremacist. Yes, yes, you are. You're a white no, supremacist. I'm not. Yes, you are, dude. Because I can, I, can, I can hear the headlights trickling around in your scalp right now, sir. So you are a white supremacist. So we got him out the way. So... Like I said, let me talk to some people, some black folks, not no suspected white supremacists pretending to be black. I want to see why black people use that term black and brown. Um, some black folks probably won't admit it now that they use that term because they understand that that's an off code term for black people. So I don't think a lot of black people are going to admit right now that they use the term black and brown. That's a very off code term that we should never, never, never use, especially at this juncture. That term is very deceptive. That term is used to undermine black people. Understand whenever racism is talked about, especially anti-black racism, the tactic of the white supremacists is to undergird the suffering that we have under anti-black racism and equate it with something else. So if they talk about anti-black racism, they always, always, always have to mix it with something else. I want y'all to notice this. Anytime the media talks about racism, they never just say somebody was being racist to a black person. They always say that it was a black, it was a racist and homophobic situation. It was a racist and transphobic situation. Somebody made racist and sexist remarks. Somebody made racist and fat phobia remarks. Somebody made a black, brown, racist um, argument. They always mix our agreements with other people, but they like to use the term, the more common trope is black and brown. That's very dangerous. And they do this in order to undermine us. So if you have to do something about the so-called bigotry and you've mixed in black and trans and black and brown and black and Arab and black and sexism, when they try to rectify the agreement, they're going to go with the latter. They're going to go with the other instead of black. So if you have a situation where you see somebody made some racist and sexist remarks, what they'll try to do to fix it is donate money to a women's organization. And they'll say, hey, look, I, I rectified that situation where there was racist and, and sexist comments. I, I just gave money to a women's group. So that's to 
ultimately undermine black people. The name of the game is to never rectify our aggrievement. And when we go around here using black and brown all the time, the aggrievement reparations or the reparative measures never go to us. Now, out here in Los Angeles, if you listen to my broadcast today, I talked heavily about all of these different types of injunctions that they're putting on black business owners and black citizens out here in Los Angeles. They have something called nuisance ordinances where they can just say that your business or even your home is a community nuisance and then they can put liens on your home and they're taking a lot of black people's houses and businesses out here. And it's really only targeting us for the most part. But when you read things about it in the media, they'll say, well, this happens to black and brown people, black and brown people, giving the impression that it's happening equally to Hispanics. So if they were to ever aggrieve or to rectify the aggrievement, They'll say, okay, well, we, we're going to fix this by giving a whole bunch of money and resources to Hispanics. So, see, we, we've made good on what we did wrong. And then black people are still left out holding the bag. The black and brown trope is very, very, very dangerous. It, it's beyond off code family. It's dangerous to use black and brown. We have to focus primarily on black issues, black people have to get tangibles. Not only should you not use the term black and brown anymore, you shouldn't allow any political figures or media pundits or anybody else to come around you using the term black and brown. You need to immediately check them and correct them when they use black and brown. Black and brown is only, 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 only used to undermine us. And we have to stop the undermining, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's raise some hands. Let's see who want to chime in here. we got Shannon in here. Sharon or Shannon is a lovely ch child on the picture. What's up, Shannon? Hey, how you doing, Tariq? What's up, buddy? How are you? Uh, yeah, I used to use the term black and brown a lot, but it was Why for like you... three reasons. The first Go one ahead. was uh, people make you feel guilty if you say black and don't add the brown. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Right. Then there's right. the perceived coalition between black and brown. Yeah. And then, you know, as you start learning and actually being around these people, it, you, you start to be like, wait a minute, that's not the case. It's only black and brown when there's something for us to collectively get. Right. But when you're getting, all you're seeing is black. Yeah. Yeah. And in when their circles, they don't say black and brown. Everything no, that no. when it comes to getting some tangibles is us Hispanics. It's all it's about us. The Latino groups, they have all of theirs. You have the Asian groups, you have white groups, and nobody guilts them for it. Right. There's and no gotta stop. brown and black. Yeah. There's no need for them to add that to the list. Yeah, exactly. So the the whole guilting thing. We got to get off that black people. So, thank you for the call too, brother. Black people, black people, don't ever feel guilty about looking out for yourself. They make it seem like it's dirty and it's it's selfish to look out for your own group. No, it's not. They all do it. Don't ever feel no damn guilt. Don't ever, 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 ever let any of these groups guilt you for not including them in what's supposed to be repaired in your community. You, especially foundational black Americans, don't Oh, no, body, nothing. You've done enough. I want us to get off this thing where we have to carry everybody and we're guilt tripped if we don't carry everybody. You don't owe nobody anything, family. It is okay to look out for your best interests. We are in an emergency state right now where we have to look out for each other. We're getting targeted politically, economically, educationally, medically, on every front, we really have to start looking out for black people, particularly foundational black Americans. Let's stop playing games with this. Let's get um Sage Laflame on here. Sage Laflame. What's up, Sage Laflame? Hey, Sarik, how are you? I'm good, Miss Laflame. How are you? I'm great at work right now, but um you definitely hit it on the head. Uh, we got to make sure that we continue to tell our FBA brothers and sisters that 
we cannot continue to cape for anybody. We have to look out for our best interests because when it comes down to it at the end of the day, when they're going through whatever they're going through, they're going to deal with their community. But when it comes to us, we can't keep taking all of the bullshit from other communities and then caping for them when they don't even look out for us. So we definitely got to continue to look out for ourselves. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, Belevin. All right. We got a lot of folks in here on this lovely evening. Let's raise your hand, family, if you want to get on. Let's get Brother Dion in here. Dion D. Jenkins. Let's get Dion and then we'll get Ben in here. Ben Yosef. So let's get Dion. Brother Dion, what's going on with you, brother? Brother Dion. My bad right there. Uh, do you hear me right now? I can hear you. How are you? Oh, uh, really good, really good. I'm hearing a lot of background. Uh, this is my first time on here, though. Uh, there's a lot of background noise. I'm hearing other voices. Is it supposed to be like that? No, brother. That. No, brother. That's going on in the housing projects over there where you are. There's literally nobody talking over oh. here. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm inside of my car, but uh, uh, I would I would like to compound on what you were saying. Yes, uh, we have. Uh, what we have to understand is that uh, blacks who descended from American slaves were chosen to to be at the bottom of society. So, right. so we have to understand that if we're going to get reparations, we must prioritize prioritize our own tribe and uh i'm i'm running for senate out here in the state of california and i know that you are from california as well so we understand yeah. that there is a that there is an agenda to make sure that black people in this country are completely washed out uh i, yes, I started running for president in 2015 for the first time ran for ran for president in 2020 for the second time i'm on the ballot in the state of california for 2022, um, come out. Let's make this happen. Now, now, what what city are you in, brother? Yeah, I'm in Vallejo, California. Vallejo, okay. Yes, sir. What what sir? What seat are you running for? I am running for U.S. Senate in the state of California. Uh, the the congressional federal seat. Uh, not not state senator. Okay. Yeah. And what 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 platform are you? What, what are you? What's some of the, the the main things on your political agenda? Yes, sir. Great question. So I am published for establishing a reparations package known as Defense Money Land Grants, DMLG. I constructed that from um, the four elements of society. I did a lot of research and I came across uh, a common element with every single nation in the world. Every element have... I mean, every nation has four elements in common, a defensive structure, capital, the flow of currency and economy, land and, and having access to that economy. And I, I, I constructed what's known as, as DMLG when I ran for president in 2020 and I constructed that and I'm, I've been running on, on that for about damn about four years now. And I understand that if we're going to get reparations we must get reparations by those four elements. We must repair the damage. Re reparations is the extension word from its root word, repair. Repair meaning to mend damage, to make whole, and to construct from a destruction cause. If we're going to get true reparations, we must take into consideration those four elements. Otherwise, it will be incomplete. And that's... That's 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 uh I was actually on Lord Jamar just yesterday. Uh Lord Jamar. Oh cool. Yes, yes, sir. Uh he had interv uh he had interviewed me, DJ K Slay, before he passed away. He brought me out to New York. He interviewed me. So yeah, I've I've you know, I'm not just some guy who just popped out of nowhere. I've been doing this no for doubt. quite quite some time. And if you Google me, you'll find me. Uh I'm a grassroots hip I'm a grassroots hip hop organizer. All right. I'm not a celebrity rapper. I'm a grassroots hip hop organizer. And like I said, if you Google me, you'll find a lot about me. Got it, man. We, we need to chop it up, man. Yes, sir. We definitely got it. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Brother. Yeah, yes, sir. All right. Uh, that's what we need. We need more brothers and sisters out here on the local political level so we can get the message out here. So we need to get these messages out. Let's get um, let's get Ben. 
Ben Yosef. Hey, how's it going, Tariq? Hey, what's up, brother? How are you? All right. I think the reason that, that blacks do this because they they, it's kind of an inferiority complex that they feel if they just say black, it doesn't hold as much weight if they don't have brown as a feature on it. Because uh, used to have black girls back in the day used to say they were French Indian, uh, French Creole or something. It just yeah. black just wasn't good enough. Right, 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 right. Real talk. Thank you so much, brother. Let's get Shiro. Shiro, hop in, Shiro. Shiro. So you over there snacking on a mango, Shiro? What are you eating over there, Shiro? Shiro, are you okay over there? Okay, sound like you over there barbecuing some meerkat meat or something. So I don't know what's going on with you, but Shiro. Hop back on when you finish eating um, your, your your brunch over there. I don't know what you're eating, Shiro. Let's get AJ. AJ, hop on, brother. Hey, what's going on, man? What's going on, AJ? How you doing, fam? You know, I'm doing good, man. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm on the same page with you on this one. Okay. Be well, you know, because a lot of times, at least at least my age group, you know, I'm 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 in my my fifties. Okay. Whenever I would say black and brown, I'm specifically talking about black people and Latino people, okay. where, where that conversation goes. But if I'm just talking about us, I say black folks, um, and you know that's that. So so when I was listening to you earlier, you was you the the premise that you was coming up with, you were saying that they ride on our coattails. And then when you say black and brown, if it's a black and Latino community, and I know that there's issues out there in California that you have, but when you say black and brown, you said it goes to the Latino community. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think that what you're not really looking at is there's a Latino community or I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Right. So we, we had the Jewish community, right. They didn't say, the Hasidic community or the the Orthodox community. It was a Jewish community. So if something happened, they came together as a community and said, hey, this is wrong, and they move as a group. We don't do that as black people. Like, I, I'm trying to understand your foundational black yes, American we thing. We, yeah, we do. Hold on, we hold, do. on hold on, hold on. This, this is what I'm saying. We, we, we come together when one of us gets shot by the cops or we come together like the media wise, we come together on that and we collectively look at it like, okay, we're all black. But when it comes to stuff like, uh, bank loans that, that, that makes sense in the community or, or let's, let's get, everybody talks about reparations. When it comes to something like reparations, we don't come together in a way that we should. Now I'm going to call you out on the foundational black American thing because I'm first generation I'm black. I'm first you're generation an, here. You're an, immigrant. you're an immigrant from where? Well, I'm I'm first generation. I'm here. My father was an immigrant from the Caribbean. Okay. You know from where? From where? What island specifically? Yes, Haiti or Jamaica? No, 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 Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, there you go. Okay. So you're calling me out on FBA because of what? No, no, I'm not necessarily calling you out on it, but what I'm saying is. They like like my my example earlier with the Hasidics and the and the uh, Orthodox in Brooklyn, right? They they come together as Jews. They don't come together as foundational Jews or a foundational Orthodox or what have you, because when you say I'm an immigrant or you say that I you know or I'm, I'm a descendant of an immigrant, a lot of us black immigrants did a lot of good work for us to move away from where we were to where we are. We're, we're, we're not in the best space, don't don't get me wrong, but we're better off in certain instances than we were back in the 50s and 60s. But, and okay, we're going to slow it down. Let's slow this down. Let's slow walk it. The problem is, AJ, a lot of you from immigrant backgrounds, we don't move as a unit because of y'all. Do you understand that? Turn your microphone on, sir. When, when you say y'all, y'all who? Y'all non-FBA tether classes. Not you particularly, but there's a okay. tether within the non-FBA community 
who look at themselves as completely different from foundational black Americans. And wait, wait, wait hold, on, hold on, hold on a second. You're absolutely right in a sense that, again, we don't look at us as a group to say we're all one one group, we're all black, or like they do all Latino, right? It's Mexicans, El Salvadorans, or, but it's La Raza, right? That's what they That's what they do out there. So, but we don't do the same thing. So yeah, you're absolutely right. There are Africans that say, I don't want to be like a black American as West. Okay, slow down, because now you just complained earlier about how we don't do that. Now you're admitting that we don't do that because of your community, which is the immigrant class. It's been hard getting the immigrant class on code with us. And that's why a lot of stuff don't get done. Do you understand that, sir? I understand that. And I'm saying that we all are doing it. You're doing it with foundational black Americans. My Caribbean people do it where I don't want to be like these black Americans. The Africans are doing it saying they don't want to be like the black Caribbean. Oh, no, no, no. Foundational black Americans are just acknowledging our lineage. This is our homeland. Okay? So we don't owe anybody anything. This is our homeland. And also, you can't say that because when things happen to immigrants, we are usually the ones caping and helping you. The fact that you were able to come here, your family was able to come here, was off the work that foundational Black Americans did, sir. So you cannot say that. I will not let you say something that was so emphatically untrue, sir. Do you understand that a lot of y'all were able to immigrate here because of foundational Black Americans? Do you acknowledge that, sir? Mr. AJ, turn your microphone on, please. I didn't realize you muted me. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. um, I, I think you're not catching what I'm saying to you. Okay. I want you to answer that, though. Do you understand? Because you said something where we don't hook up with you or whatever. You understand that it is foundational Black Americans. We are the main ones pushing for your family, the immigrant class, to come here. Do you acknowledge that, sir? I absolutely acknowledge that, but what you're not acknowledging is we're the only ones that are looking at us differently. When my family immigrated here, my my, my mother's side of family, because my mom is second, I'm, I'm second generation here on my mother's side of family. When they immigrated here, the second their foot hit the ground, it was called a nigger. So, so it, it doesn't, it doesn't, you, what you're doing right now is you're, 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 focus so so intently on foundational black american that right. you're not hearing me say that as a, a black american myself i agree with you okay. i think the problem is hold on hold on please don't mute me for a second because i really want to get this to to you man because you got to the, you got I, I respect you you're all over the place sir you really got to get to the point i'm trying to be fair well, with my you. my point is this we us are all in the same boat so to say a foundational black American versus a Caribbean American, that's how we're looking at each other, but that's not how the society's looking at us. Versus, we're all black. Versus you. Versus you how? What, what, what do you, what, expand on that question so I understand, you so said, I can answer it. You said uh, foundational black Americans versus Caribbeans. Versus you how? How are we versus you? you you're not. Ver listen. When I say versus foundation of black Americans versus Caribbean Americans, I'm saying the distinction that you're making right now. That's not a versus. That's just history and lineage, sir. That's not a competition. I, I'm not saying it in an adversarial way. I'm saying uh, I'm saying say versus, foundation of black Americans compared to versus by definition versus is adversarial by definition. You're using these adversarial terms. We're not competing or trying to battle you by acknowledging our foundational Black American lineage. Our foundational Black American lineage is not a contest. It's not a versus. It's not a competition. It's not even up to debate. It's not a club. It's not a group. 
it is something that we are born with. We have a distinct lineage as foundational Black Americans. Now, wh why does that seem like a problem to you, sir? Our lineage seems like it's a problem to you, sir. What? Why is that? You're you're spinning this to make it sound like I'm saying to you that somehow that your lineage versus my lineage is somehow different. We all hail from Africa. The only reason why the only reason why there's Caribbeans and 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 as you say, foundational Black Americans. The only reason why is because the boat stopped there and they just shoved everybody who was closest to the door out. Uh, not the boatism. God, not the. The same boat that dropped you off is. Oh, I hate boatisms. I hate the same boatism, sir. Sir. Okay. You, would you would sir, you would sir. you agree? Would you agree? Sir, sir. Would you agree? Would you agree that wait. the people that are oh, let's try this again. When I say wait, sir, that means wait. If we are in the same boat, why do y'all have the Caribbean Day Parade up there in the Brooklyn area every year? Turn your microphone on. The, the, the same reason why they have the Black American Day Parade in Manhattan up in Harlem. It's the same reason why we are having this discussion right now. The Black American Parade includes everybody, by the way. That includes Black Puerto Ricans and Black Caribbeans. Do you understand that? The Black American Day means Black Americans, everybody who has become an American. It's not foundational Black American, which is different. Okay, we haven't had a foundational Black American Parade yet. We're going to. Just like we're having a foundational Black American holiday, we're going to start celebrating this year. But up until this point, we have not had a specific holiday specifically for foundational Black Americans, meaning the freedmen, meaning the descendants of slaves. We've never done that. Tariq, the reason why I'm saying the same reason why everybody else is doing it is because in this country, we have to hold on to what makes us feel attached to a group. The problem is we're not realizing, and, and I'm really, really trying to... Sir, you, you stepped away from the question. I asked you a question, so you thought you were going to dance around it. I asked you if we're all from Africa, which the whole planet is from Africa, and why do you guys have the Caribbean Day Parade and Trinidadian Day and all of that stuff? Why do y'all do that? Since we're all African, you don't have, you don't call it the African parade. Y'all don't have African. The, the, the reason why we have the Caribbean Day parade, the reason why there are parades in this, which we're talking about New York City, the reason why there are different ethnic group parades is because, uh -huh. right. mm -hmm. go ahead, because. We are different culturally based upon where we grew up or where we hail from. Ding, now, ding, hold on. Ding. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on a second. The, so, so I answered that question. The problem with what we're discussing and what I feel I must not be conveying to you well enough because, you know, you keep turning left on me too. No, no, no. The problem that I... The, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Hold on. I, 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 oh, oh, oh. Oh, so, 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 so down. Something that I completely agree with. We uh, have cultural and ethnic differences based on the geography. So why do foundational black Americans have to act like our cultural difference in ethnicity is invisible? You don't. And I'm not suggesting that you should. Yes, you are what by I, saying no, we no, are. No, no, I'm not. We're all from I, Africa. You just said that, sir. You, we all from Africa until it's time for the Caribbean Day Parade. Then all of a sudden, it's all about us. It's all about Trinidadians. But when it comes to foundational black Americans, come on, we all the same. Why acknowledge your distinct group? Why, why do that? You're, you're taking this in a space where I'm not trying to go with you. Well, no, what which, I'm saying, wait, 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 hold on, to, to wait, sir, sir, calm down, it's all right, we're, we're taking it to a truthful space, we're having truth to power, sir, that's all we're doing, go ahead, sir, go ahead. <laughs> Lord have mercy, listen, man, 
I'm not trying to say to you that American cultural differences should not be celebrated. As a matter of fact, I celebrate all of them. Okay? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying to you is this. When we start to have this infighting between us, that's not how... Who's infighting? The only people who are infighting are the non-FBAs who are trying to fight with us because we're acknowledging our lineage. You all keep centering yourselves in our spaces, trying to make it about you, talking about why we fighting. We're not thinking about y'all like that. Do you understand that part of the game, sir? We're not, we're not really thinking about you like that. So why center yourself in our spaces talking about, hey, we do all this fighting, this fighting is crazy. We ain't thinking about you like that. We're talking about reparations and we're going up against the damn government who owes us. And you guys hop in our space talking about, come on, man, this fighting got to stop, man. We got to love each other. All this fighting. And come on, this fighting. We're not. We're, we're really. So, not the, sir. so like, when, when you go ahead, go ahead. Finish your thought. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. We're, we're not tripping on you. We're, we're letting everybody do their own thing. We're we're doing something that's conducive to our lineage and our business, and we are not stopping you. If you want to go do whatever you do, knock yourself out. But why do you think there's a fight? Because the way that you express yourself, look, I'm, I'm going to just take your statement that you just made. Right. We're not thinking about you. We're not. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let me let me finish because because I didn't I didn't want to interrupt you because I really wanted to get I want to get an understanding of it and I, I respect you, dude. So got it, got so I, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the debate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here, here's here's the thing. When you present it like we're not thinking about you and and you're talking about reparations. Part of the reason why we don't have reparations right now is because we have not collectively pushed for reparations. I don't qualify for reparations in America. Right. Every Caribbean person that is is of Caribbean descent pre-slavery, pre right? They don't qualify. But when you start to say that why are you entering in our space as foundational black Americans, you alienate the same black Amer black the, the same Caribbean black people um from being on your side and we that's how okay. wait 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 hold, hold on hold on hold on I, I... hold on this is where y'all get it twisted we don't need you on our side we really don't need you on our side we're not asking for your assistance i want y'all to understand this we as foundational black americans we're not asking you to be on our side because your input don't really make a difference anyway. We always do the fighting and the heavy lifting. Sir, y'all didn't even get it popping in your homeland. You fled from your homeland at the risk of sounding kind of cruel. I'm not trying to be cruel, but you left your homeland. What you going to do for us, you couldn't even do it back home. We're the ones staying and fighting, sir. I'm not trying to beat up on you, but it's time for truth to power. We're not asking for that energy. We're not asking for it. So when we say, hey, why don't you kind of step out of this? This ain't about you. We're kind of being polite as far as that's concerned. This is foundational black American business. We don't need you in our business. You can't help. You don't want to help. You didn't help yourself back in your homeland, to be honest. And a lot of people actually come among us and they try to undermine us in our reparations claim who are non-FBA. Whenever we start talking about reparations, we start getting a lot of these non-FBA people coming up talking about how we don't deserve it and we need to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps like that mammy um, um, vice mayor, whoever she is, vice governor out there in Virginia, that Jamaican mammy who got up there talking about we need to get over slavery and stop talking about slavery. No, we don't need you in our conversations. Uh, let's, let's just get that straight. Let me get some more people on here. Right, because I, I didn't want to hear dude babbling. He was just gonna start babbling some more. I didn't want to hear it. All right, let's get um 
Okay, you got these red X's on here. So the, usually these are white supremacist trolls. Whenever you see those red X's, usually those are white supremacist trolls. So the person with the red X's, um, turn your microphone on. Say that about me. Why would you say that? that Give me a chance to speak, please. You know what I mean? Okay. This what, is a fascinating okay. conversation. And you're here. Yeah, okay. Me slow down. Okay. 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 Sir, put the mayonnaise down and slow down a little bit. I know that mayonnaise gives you a nice good rush, but you're going to have to slow it down a little bit. All right. Now, let's turn your microphone on again, sir. I hear an accent. Where are you from? Turn your microphone. I'm from the UK. You from? I'm from the UK. I've spoken to you. There you go. I think I remember. Yeah. You were Caucasian the... gentleman, right? No. <laughs> I'm not Caucasian, sir. What I'm going to give you the, the full respect you deserve right now, but I want to I wanna get involved in the conversation. Okay, I want you to stop bumping them gums and answer my question. Now, what are you? Let's establish protocol here now you're not caucasian so what are you sir turn your microphone on i'm west indian caribbean okay yep. where in the caribbean is your family from jamaica and dominica there you go all right so what's on your mind sir no, I, someone else was just speaking, and, and I don't know why you've just put me on. You've cut the person off, and now you want to speak to me, yeah? So, as, f as far as I'm concerned, I understand what you're saying. You're fully for um, black America, yeah? A hundred percent. Foundational, black, foundational, yeah, foundational black, black, America. black America. I understand that, that I fully get that. What I'm saying to you is, are you saying that the opinion and the viewpoint of people from a different uh, geographical region to you are not valid because you're the only one that matters? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying I don't want your opinion. You That's what I'm saying my... because you're, I don't want it. Why? If you're a person, if I'm talking about FBA business yeah. and you are non-FBA, yeah. I don't need your opinion. Okay, so what, what, so what are you doing as a foundational black American? What are you doing that makes us exempt from what you're doing? Minding our own business and letting you mind yours. I'm not worried about what you're doing over there. Well, I help people over there in the UK. I won't say that because I have stood up for a lot of the brothers and sisters there in the UK. Okay. But I wouldn't get in your business trying to interject my opinions and all of that stuff. I go in respectfully. And a lot of yeah. times when people ask for my help, if I yeah. feel like doing it, I will give it. But when you come and you give unsolicited input into our business... You can what? sit your ass down and have you some tea and trumpets. No, <laughs> I love that. I love that. I mean, it's good. It's quirky. But listen, here's what I want to say. And please don't cut me off because I really want to speak to you because I've, I've followed you for a while and I've seen what you've been saying and I'm really interested in your opinion. So it's very important for me to kind of really understand what your agenda is. What are you doing here? Like, what do you try? What are you trying to achieve? Yeah. What are you trying to what are you trying to achieve? Please enlighten me. What's everybody trying to achieve? I'm trying to achieve what everybody in life is trying to achieve. That's not an answer. I'm asking yes, you, what, an you personally, the FBA, what is the FBA trying to achieve? FBA is a lineage. To. Do you it's understand that? It's a lineage. Do you know what okay. that is? That means you're born an FBA. You're born a foundational black American. So you don't yeah. have to achieve anything. Right. You don't have so to what achieve. You don't even have so, to have an agenda. So what you're saying is you, you, you're owed things. You're owed. What are you? Okay. So let me ask you this rather than assume, assuming. What are you saying that you deserve or you, you, because you're making, you're hosting this space and you're, you're, you're dealing with people that are coming with different perspectives and you're shutting them down. Okay, we're old FBA. reparations. <clears throat> we're old reparations from the United States government. Now, do you right. think you were owed okay. reparations by the British government? Um, I believe, and this is the honest truth, and I'm going to tell you the honest truth of what I believe. The British 
went around and they went and took over a land and then they said, oh, this belongs to us now. It's not yours. And then they turned around and said, oh, and as history, as his, history would tell you, it's colonialism. But you see, if I went to your house and I took your shit, what's that? That's robbery. That's theft. But what they've done, if they've turned around and said, oh, I've took this, but it was colonialism. What the fuck is colonialism? That's nonsense. I've never heard anything so ridiculous in my life. So, so are you owed right. by the British government? Do they owe you? They need to give back who they robbed from. They need to give it back to them. I couldn't say it was me, but I can say whoever they stole from to control what they controlled, they need to give it back. That's what I say. So I, I don't, don't think, about, it's not so about you don't, me. Okay. So you sound like a white person. That's why I asked you that. I wanted to see what your answer would be. And your answer is what I thought it would be. You sound like a white person. You don't sound like a West Indian person. You sound that's an answer that a white person would give. You understand that? That sounds like an answer that a white person would give, sir. Turn your microphone on. So why is that? Why is it that it sounds like an answer a white person would but give? But then again, sound? but then again, mm -hmm. there's a lot of coonery that comes from a lot of folks on from some of these islands. Right. And you have a lot of these Caricom people talking about they don't even want no tangibles. They want an apology and yeah. They want an education program, so you yeah. might just be you, to come to think of it. Because I'm I'm looking at you, or I'm listening to you, trying to think of a black person who thinks like a foundational black American, right? And I have to realize a lot of folks don't have our mindset. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. I can listen. I can accept that because I don't fully understand where you're coming from. However, yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What I want to understand is when I say to you they should just give back what they stole, why is that not an acceptable answer for you? Because when I asked you if they should give it to you, you seem like I, you, you're like, no, not, not me. 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 Bro, listen, bro. How, how is it not about you if you're a black person and they stole I'm a West from Indian your man. family? Listen, listen. I'm a West Indian man. I've grown up in, 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 in London. So... I'm a West Indian man growing up in London, but I've made my own place in this in in this in where I am. Like I've made my own place. Like I've done things to achieve what I need to achieve. So in in relation to me, it's not about me because I have battled with these guys all every step of the way and I've established who I am amongst them. What I'm saying is the the the, the land that they stole and then said it was colonialization they need to give that back because colonialism and all this shit is not worth nothing it doesn't mean anything and this sir is why y'all should not be in our conversations because we as foundational black americans we don't think like that we want what's owed to us we haven't cowered out and said hey let bygones be bygones because that's what you're talking you've made your own way or whatever no 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 i want my money you understand? And we want our money. They sat here and used our families who built this country from scratch, didn't pay them, and the debt has been distributed from generation to generation. And we have still inherited the debt from that. While the dominant society is still inheriting the benefits from exploiting my family. I don't want to let that go. And we're not letting that go. This is why we are having a hardcore reparations movement right now. Now, you're over there in the UK. You're eating porridge with white folks and you think everything is kumbaya, makuna matata, whatever. That's fine. And, sir, this is the reason why you shouldn't, or other people who are non-FBA, should not really be in our conversations when it comes to our reparations and political agendas, sir. So I thank you for proving my point. You have a good day, sir. All right. I didn't want to hear him do any more babbling. But that right there, ladies and gentlemen, shows you 
why these folks should not be in our mix. They don't think like us. They don't have our temperament. They don't have our resolve. And they're not trying to stand up to these white supremacists like us. So I don't want them in the mix. I just don't. What's up, Kevin, Kevin, whatever your name is. I don't know if that's a picture of Gandhi on your thing, but turn your microphone on. Hi. Uh, hi, Tarek. How are you doing? I'm good. What's your name? Is it Kevin Keeban? What's your mm, name? Kevin, Kevin, yeah. It's like Kevin. And where are you from? I'm I'm from the United States. I'm Indian American. I'm not a foundational person. Right. Of course you're not. Of course. <laughs> um, how long have you been here from India? I was born and raised here. Okay. What part of India is your family from? Uh, Kerala. Kerala? Kerala. And how far is that from Mumbai? It's basically the southern tip of India. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. All right. So chime in. What's on your mind? So I I, I just have like, I, I, I looked at, um, if you look at by race, um, the people who swing their votes the most it's is the white people so it's like about 65 percent you know they lean republican but then as further down you go in race i think black people african americans make um they're actually the most loyal to the democratic party and right. i think that's actually a problem like i think if you want to gain more power politically you have to, I think, like, you have to be 50-50 and just be the biggest swing block in the country. That way, both both parties will chase after you and try to, you know, do everything and anything and everything. I think the point, the idea that you guys, I, I think it's, like, at 85%, um, you guys, uh, African-Americans vote for the Democrats, um, basically, yeah. no matter what. Okay, but that... Right, right, right. But I, I, I can't take that advice because you're you're an East Indian. And here's the thing. You guys don't do all of these political maneuverings and you're given resources in order for them to use you as buffer classes and to spite us. So let's be very clear. When other people tell us black foundational black Americans about all of these different types of political mover, maneuvers that we should do, y'all don't even do that. And East Indians, especially Asians, Far East Asians, they are the least politically savvy people. They don't really vote like that, but mm. they come. They, they, they we're, really sec we're second on the we're right below um, whites and then comes Latinos, then comes African-Americans. If you if you look at voting patterns, Asian-Americans in general, I guess, if you want to put them in a category. Now, you're saying that East Indians vote right under whites? Uh, I think it's it's around the 70 percent Democrat. Um, we're not we're definitely not a swing like we're not important politically, I don't think. Right. You, you're not, you're like politically like a non-factor. Right, I don't right, know right. where you get yeah, yeah, Politically, you're a, a non-factor as far as the voting thing. They don't really have to pander to you. Right. They use you basically as buffers against us. So what they'll do, even if you're not even a citizen, they'll send resources and outsource things to you and bring you in to, to have certain jobs to undermine black workers. So let's just be very clear on what, what how they utilize you guys um so again the political structure to get political advice eh, i i can't accept that from a person who's not from a community that's too politically savvy well you don't have to look at asians you can just look at how whites vote right i mean they 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 are by far the largest swing voters in the country they will vote democrat or republican whereas blacks by and large will vote pretty concretely for the democrats no matter what even if you know their neighborhood goes goes to shit you know let's keep the democrats in right and why are the neighborhoods going to shit though yeah. i think because i think this sort of level of loyalty in a political party will uh cause you to be ignored yeah well, well we don't have an well we have to have an agenda as foundational black americans um we're ignored because we've accepted this thing where we wanted to include everybody in a minority coalition and we thought other non-white people if we help you guys especially east indians that you would turn around and reciprocate and that has never been the case 
um, a lot of y'all come over here and y'all have some of the most vehemently anti-black racist ideologies towards us after we've helped you get here, especially in your community, sir. Is that true or not true? Uh, yes, I've been on a lot of uh, spaces um, with a lot of people from the United States or who are living in the United States who are not either white or black. And yeah, there's a lot of racism. So right. yeah, I would agree with that that sentiment. Right. I so personally been, don't have that. I try, I try not to feel that way. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, our problem is not just we've been loyal to the Democrats. We've been loyal to all of these so-called other minority groups. We've We've fallen into the whole minority coalition, and we've been the only one upholding the minority coalition. And that's what we're saying now. Hey, we we have to stop doing that. It's just not working. Now, would you agree with that? Well, yes. I mean, I don't know how you exercise that power aside from voting, right? And you only have two options. And if you keep ex exercising it in the same way, no matter what, then you're not really collateralizing your vote. Yeah, we don't. We don't even have to vote. Just us understanding. And if we do vote, we just have an agenda that's going to be very specific to the needs of foundational Black Americans, and not let them slip in all of the minority and people of color rhetoric that doesn't work for us. Because what happens is. We as foundational black Americans, we've always been sympathetic to the plight of other non-white people, especially dark skinned people. So when we see images of East Indians, people over there in your homeland starving and hungry and doing bad in this dilapidated homes and struggling, we put our little resources together and we say, hey, man, we'll share whatever meager resources we have with those people. And then what happens, y'all come over here and then we end up getting a Dinesh D'Souza running around after we done lifted you up and you're running around here talking about we need to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps you, you see how that that game has been working sir yeah but i would say that black americans actually do possess a huge amount of power um politically in terms of being a voting block and in a mm -hmm. sense you're kind of refusing to use it by only voting in one way well, uh, th that's what we're doing now. You have to understand. We, but you just said, I don't want to vote. Like, we don't have to vote. We don't have to vote. But I'm saying if we do vote, we have to have a black, a foundational black American agenda. And again, we don't have to vote. We can use our non-vote as a strategy, too, because... The Democrats depend on the black voting bloc. If we don't vote, if we ignore the political process, we'll let whoever win. And usually it's going to be a Republican. So, we'll yeah, that means they'll pay attention to you, right? Right. But even that's all I'm saying. Right, right. So, either if we vote or not vote, we have to, uh, we as foundational black Americans, we just have to have a, a, an agenda that's specific to us. So, that's where we're going with it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of basically like shopping. It's like if, if you don't like the product you're getting, you you just say, I, I'm i going to go somewhere else with my vote. And I don't, I mean, you don't, I mean, yes, I guess you, there's, it, it would be problematic of you to, to say that, oh, I have to vote for the Republicans and I have to agree with their ideology. Maybe you don't. Maybe it's it's just enough people swing in in the african-american community that you scare the pants off the democrats and then you get them to pay attention to you right and that's what we're doing now right now and look we we we're not rocking with the democrats right now the democrats their name is mud that's why the democrats are struggling right now and they're trying to cobble together another voting block. This is why they're letting so many illegal immigrants over here. They think that they're, they're going to cobble together some other voting coalition to undermine us. And it's just not working for them. Black Americans, especially foundational black Americans, young ones, they're just not really rocking with the Democrats right now. The Democrats are in trouble. So we're going to see some real interesting things in this next, next election. So... I agree. You shouldn't bring in people uh, to supplant you, essentially. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. I think we must make... All right. But thank you so much, buddy. All right. All right. Let's get a couple of more folks in here. Who's this? What's up, Shaka? Where's Shaka? All right. Let's get Shaka in here. What's up, Shaka? Hop on in, Shaka. Mm. 
shit. I just, I just love the um the way you just schooling them. Keep doing what you do, man. I've been following you for a long time. Just want to give my praises, man. Keep rocking, man. Much respect. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. It was. Let's get on. Uh, it was. What's up, Robert? Yeah, my name's Camacho, man. Um, listen, man. There's, there's a lot of truth that you've uh, been saying, and I'm from Bushwick, New York, and um, honestly, as a Puerto Rican. Um, the Puerto Ricans have a lot of identity problems, and it, and it's I know and and it's on the basis of uh of the structure in itself because um and 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 the education because of of racism within the home in itself and and the jealousy amongst the flesh tone is 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 insane um because of the depictions and, and everything that we've been, I, I didn't see a blonde girl with blue eyes ever. Like when I was growing up in, in Brooklyn, um, I thought everybody was Puerto Rican until, um, uh, I, I went to St. Elizabeth Seton because, uh, my, my dad was a white. Okay, I don't know where brother is going. Thank you so much, Camacho. I don't know where you were going. You all over the place, brother. So I'll let you collect your thoughts. Yeah, I don't know where you were talking about blonde and blue eyes and your dad working and I, you were all over the place. So so it sound like you're going through some things. I have you kind of get it together and then call back. What's up, Shabazz X? Shabazz X, what's up, Shabazz X? How's it going, my man? Good. I'm good, sir. How are you? All right, all right, all right. Well, well, I'm being uh, a descendant of from Praia, West Coast of Africa. And me, I'm seeking that work. What, what, yeah, Praia. What, what, what country are you from? Praia. What country are you from, sir? Praia, in the West Coast of Africa. But I, okay. up, I grew up here in, in, in the area of uh, North New Jersey, right? So oh, me, right. I'm looking for reparations from the Portuguese, from the French, from the Italians, from the Americans, from every fucking white people. See, when in Africa, my family also are from uh, Bengala, Angola, and I also have family members from Maputo in Mozambique. So these white motherfuckers has been going out there robbing us from, from all these years, and I'm owed reparations from everybody, including some black foundational Americans who also keep helping them to go over it to rob us every fucking time. They're taking stuff from Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's slow down. Let's slow down. So you're saying that foundational black Americans owe you some reparations too? Shabazz, turn your microphone on, sir. Mr. Shabazz, turn your microphone on, sir. I got to hear this. Turn, turn your microphone on, Mr. Shabazz. Okay, I don't know his Mr. Shabazz. I need you to turn your microphone on. Unmute yourself. I do not have you. There you go. I can hear you now. Yep. So you said foundational Black Americans owe you reparations too? Yes. Those that those that quit, those that get uh, side by side with the white man and went there and helped. Oh yeah, they did not chose. They yours, right? So they owe me too. So they help, right? What, sir, so everybody help. Sir, everybody slow down. I, I charge everybody. Slow down. Now, I don't even know. I never even heard of the country you named. So how are we owing you? We've never been over there. Nowhere near where you're from, sir. Come on, man. We Don't you have some uh, 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 members of your tribe part of the U.S. military? They are right, yeah. so they're helping. So they're part of the problem. So I'm charging everybody. I don't give a shit. So that, everybody who's okay. participating, Baba Tunde, slow down. So that means you owe because in West Africa, y'all help sell some of us over here, right? Yes. All right. So let's clear. Let's clear that debt up first. Okay, because that was the first crime. So let's get that paper out of you and everybody in your homeland first. 
All right. Those 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 in my homeland also will have to pay because me, I'm pro black. Anywhere I go, anybody who's down to be with me, to be as, as part of the black tribe, to go against the oppressor, I'm down with them. But the minute somebody start making separations to be on their own side, not to fight collectively, so now I'm charging you too. I charge those that get on the side of the white man, helping them extortion from the black man. Because I'm a black man first. It doesn't matter if I'm in London, if I'm here, if I'm in Japan, if I'm in India, doesn't matter. I'm still look at it as a black man. So we then, why, a then, then why, sir, do you have a gazillion different tribal groups in your own homeland, sir? Yes, I do. You know what I mean? But me, I need everybody to be collective. Because that's the well, only how, way we you haven't win. got everybody collect. How come you haven't got everybody collective and everybody on the same page in your homeland? Y'all come over here talking about we all the same, and you have a gazillion different tribal groups in your homeland where y'all cutting each other's throat and stabbing each other in the back. Why haven't y'all gotten it together over there? Same as here, because I also I have some some of. Uh, ain't no same as here, brother. We don't have all of those tribal differences. Foundational black Americans are generally on code with each other. We are nowhere near as tribal and mixed up. All right. And so, let me, so let me ask you a question. Is, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Cory Booker, one of your own? Yes, he's a foundational black American. So, I hate, he's I on hate that side, right? Views. I he's hate on that side, views. right? I hate his political views, but I'm not going to chop him up with a damn hatchet. You understand? Like y'all do in your homeland. We all doing we all doing it everywhere the same way. No, we, we either ain't. get on the same boat collectively, just like the white man. They get together when okay. it's time to it. Extortion us, they don't start going for tribe. Okay, okay, thank I, I'm, I'm done with the babbling. He's that's Joel off babbling. Oh, goodness, no, 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 y'all not gonna be like we all do it over here. No, we don't. No, y'all beefs end up y'all kidnapping whole villages of girls and chopping people's arms off. No, we don't do that. No, 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 we don't do that. Not in any sense of the word, we don't do none of that stuff y'all do over there. Uh-uh, y'all not going to put that on us. Let's not play that game. Oh, goodness. Okay, let's get this guy. Let's get um Fisher, level Fisher something. Hold on, what's this guy's? What's your name, man? Fisher somebody. Fisher, hop on, man. Howdy. I just want to say yes, that absolutely no African-American or POC-American owes anyone shit. Right. I know this. This Period. is absolutely true. I'm just Real saying, talk. like, we definitely owe some reparations. That is a true thing, especially to African Americans. And I mean, you know, born in America, brought here, like, you know, on record, everything. They are uh, owed black money. Black like, right. your fa like, families are owed money. But, like, I don't know what that fucking dude was on about. Like, ain't nobody over here have anything to do with nothing over there, so. There you go. There you go. Thank you so much, brother. All right. Let's get um, a lot of folks in here. Who is um, who is this person? Let's get Zeb. Let's get Zeb in here. Zeb, hop on, ma'am. We're going to get Zeb in here. Zeb, hop on. You can turn your microphone on, Zeb. That would be so good if you turn that microphone on. I do. I have it on. How are you, Zeb? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good, Zeb. Where are you calling from, dear? I'm calling from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. There you go. There you go. There's a lot of riders out there in Oklahoma. What's on your mind? What's on my mind? It's, it may be a little bit off topic, but this is something that that's going on in my household right now. What's happening in your household, dear? Well, so me and my husband, we've been married for 12 years. I'm FBA, he FBA. Okay. The whole bloodline on both sides. 
and my husband works hard for us. And this is the whole issue that's going on right now. And I'm just trying to uh, build it out with other people that have other experiences or maybe can give me some advice. My husband is a mechanical engineer and he works for this company. And he, he has been accosted this past Thursday by his white supervisor. His white supervisor was going on his vacation and he was very teary eyed. And he asked my husband, he's like, Can I give you a hug? And he hugged my husband and he tried to pick him up while he was smashing his genitals on him. Good Lord. So your husband got sexually assaulted? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Good Lord. Now, what'd your husband do? He's a mechanical engineer for this company, but he can't bring in, you know, any outside devices or anything like that to record what's actually going on. Oh, goodness. How long has your husband been on this job? Ten years. Okay. Now, there is something about your husband that made that white man feel comfortable enough to to rub his genitals on your damn husband like that. You you, you don't do that to just regular do something. Motherfucker wouldn't do no shit like that to me, mm-hmm. for example. Because I don't give you that kind of energy. All right? You just know. There's certain brothers you know you can't do that with. Yeah. So, so what what's up with your husband? Is your husband kind of a docile kind of dude, a submissive, subservient kind of dude? He's, he's, he's like generally nice to everybody that he sees. And I'm generally not. Uh, yeah, but come on, man. Your husband, he gave some he gave some energy to that white man to make him feel comfortable with doing that. So, you know, you got to kind of, your, your husband kind of has to step it up. No, you and, know, I, I told him that. I said, well, uh, you can't, you plus can't it be nice re- to everybody that you meet. Everybody ain't your friend. Your, your husband was probably at that job cooning. He was probably at that job cooning it up. Um, what's your husband's political views? Is he kind of conservative? What's his deal? He's independent. Oh, okay. Okay. That Independent is cool. I'm good with independent. But does he lean towards a lot of conservative views? And nothing's wrong with that. I'm, I'm a very conservative person, to be honest. No, he doesn't uh, lead towards conservative views. It's very much democratic, and I'm very much like, uh-uh. Okay, but um, yeah, you you and your husband has to y'all y'all have to kind of sit down and talk about the kind of energy that he's giving at this job because now you can't go up there on some premeditated stuff and smash down on that white dude. If you're gonna do something, you should have done it right there. You should have slapped the crap out of him right there, but. Now, if he would have did that, he would have lost his freedom. So I'm glad my husband did not just go with flesh. Okay. Well, I, I think differently. Man. Well, I'm different. I'm not afraid of jail, to be honest, ma'am. I, I'm I'm not. Certain things I'll go to jail for. I've been to jail before. It, it's bad. It ain't that bad for me to let a motherfucker go rub their My, they, my they husband has been to prison, and he never experienced that like that. Yeah, but it was okay. quite off guard. Yeah, free world. Yeah, I, I, I do a night in jail. I, I do that night, and you know, it, it'll cost mm-hmm. a, little, a couple of bail dollars, and I might have to get another job, but it's worth it. And uh, I'm not gonna be buck broken at nobody's fucking job. All right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you get, talk to your man, but that he he got buck broken at the job, man. That's all it is. So hopefully, hopefully you guys work that out. But thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Certain things you just don't let go down, man. Yeah, but he gonna lose his freedom. That shit, you already lose your freedom. And yeah, you don't let nobody buck break you. That's not the move. That's all that was. And they love doing stuff like that with dudes, with black dudes, who they think they can get away with that with. They know who they can pull that nonsense with. They know. Man. Okay. 
Well, that that kind of took a left turn. That that took the energy somewhere different. Are you married to Terry Crews, ma'am? I should ask you that. Damn. All right, we got a lot of folks in here. The room is getting packed up. Let's get Bo. All right, let's get Bo in here. What's up, Mister Bo? Bo, hop on, sir. Bo, just turn your microphone on if you can, sir. Yes, okay, it's on now. Um, there you go. Hi, Bo. I came from a small town in Tennessee. I'm white. And it's mm-hmm. the, the Clinton Twelve. The Clinton Twelve, like the whole like. I, I grew up as I can't. I can't get why like people don't. Like my town doesn't understand of like what I've been through. Like I played college baseball, all this shit, and I don't see. Like I've been through the shit. Like I've seen my friends go through the shit that y'all gone through. Like, uh, like look up Clinton Twelve. Okay, sir, you're all over the place. No, sir. Clinton Twelve. Like Clinton, what's Clinton? Clinton, Tennessee. Twelve kids who came down the hill to go to high school. Like it was a segregation thing. What year was this? What year did this happen? Uh, probably in the sixties. Okay, so some bad happened to some black kids in the sixties. No, 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 town, no, no, right? no, no, no. It wasn't bad for the kids. Like we we desegregated, and they came down. Oh, like my town was like one of the first towns in Tennessee to allow black kids to come into the college, and then oh, okay, and I played baseball for the high school, or whatever. I was pretty good, and then I went to college, and, like, I didn't see race. Like, I saw a teammate. Like, I don't get this whole bullshit of, oh, you're black, I'm white, you're Mexican, you're Puerto Rican. Like, I I don't fucking get it. Like, I... Um, yeah, your community, they're the ones who created the racial categories, okay? Well, yeah, they did, but they were the first ones to, like, be like, no... The first, the first fucking high school in Tennessee was Clinton to be like, it's not segregated anymore. It's black and white high school. Okay, just because they let 12 kids come there in Tennessee right now to this day, we're fighting in Tennessee to stop them from undermining the economic prosperity of a black town. I, <laughs> right, right now in Tennessee, they're trying to undermine a black town from getting an economic windfall with businesses, with a prosperous business coming in there, they're right, right. now working to undermine them. I'm so on your side. Them, I'm on right. your side. Uh huh. But don't talk about a symbolic thing that happened. No, 60 no, 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 years no, no, no. Ago. I was okay. saying like that happened, but like I left that town and went to college and played baseball and met like <laughs> you don't understand like I. You, you sound frustrated. Why are you frustrated? I'm frustrated you because frustrated? you think I'm racist. I'm not racist. Like I, I didn't say nothing I about know you that. But racist, like, you don't dude. understand. I do understand. Like I what went, the hell? <laughs> I went to college and played baseball with. I didn't say anything about you being racist, sir. No, I'm just nothing. saying. Like I, I don't. I don't get it. Man. I literally didn't even imply you were a racist. I didn't say anything about you. I'm listening to you. I haven't made a judgment on you or anything, sir. Okay. So. What, now, why did you think I assumed you were racist? Why did you think that? I don't know. Like, you were, like, combating me. Like, you were like, no, this because your town was this and that and that. I'm just trying to get town. To, sir, sir, I'm trying to get you to get to the point. You just okay, kind of my, my point is that I met so many different people from so many different races and so many different ethnicities. Right. That I don't judge by what you are. Like I judge by your person. Like, like I, as you're supposed to. Exactly. As you're supposed to. Okay, now let me let me be clear. I'm not going to give you a cookie for being a goddamn human being. That's how you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be a flaming 
white supremacists, all right? Y'all want somebody yeah. to pat you on the back for not burning crosses. I'm not going to do that. You're okay. not supposed to be an asshole. You're supposed to treat people decent. Right. And you're supposed to stop people within your community from mistreating people, all right? Yeah, we have. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't want to hear about you having a black friend and you, you gave some... Uh, um, uh, honey bun to your black co-worker or nothing like that. You don't get no brownie points for not being a degenerate. All right? Y you know why I give you brownie points? If you take the extra mile and you produce justice by giving some equity to a black person. Now, if you went out of your way to say, hey, I see how black people were done wrong and I fought and got them some equity and some reparations and I got them some payments and I got black people papered up to make up for the racism that they suffered, then we can sit down and I'll buy you a beer. We can talk then because you're the kind of person I rock with. Let's get clear. Any white people listening, if you get some equity for a black person, not equality, equity, meaning you have an equitable relationship, you went and helped a black person get compensation for racial injustice, that's when you get a pat on the back from me. But I don't want to hear about you went to the club and did the Dougie with a black person and you've played on a football team with a black person and they were all right. I don't give a damn. That's just basic human beingness. Nobody gets a pass. The fact that your community is so degenerate and evil that you have to sit here and try to get props for just being a damn human being. That says a lot. Let's get Anurit in here, please. Anurit. Hi, Tariq. Um, it's so nice to talk to you. I'm so sorry. I think we had an issue last time. I don't remember you, ma'am, but if we had an issue, I hope you've atoned for it. What's on your mind? Oh, no, it was just an issue. I think we couldn't connect. Um, but um, I've been listening to you for quite some time now, and I really agree with your point of view. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for the knowledge. Um, I have a boss, Mr. Marquette Devon Burton, who is a tech entrepreneur, African-American man, and we would love to have you on our YouTube channel for an interview. And I've been trying to reach out to you over LinkedIn, Instagram, um, and Twitter. And I've been trying to reach to you for quite some time now. So it'd be lovely if we could have you, have you on our platform. Excuse me. Okay. Well, I will look into it, ma'am. I will definitely look into it. Send me an email. I'm, I'm kind of particular about people's channels that I go to, but I'll, I'll look into it. I'm very particular about that now. Okay, let's get um Via. I think that's your name. Viona. Hop on, Viona. Hi. Hello, how are you? Dear? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Now, Viona, am I pronouncing your name right? Viona? It's Viona. Viona. Now, Viona, where are you from? Are you from Jamaica? No, I'm from Ohio. Ohio. Okay, look like you in Jamaica in some of your pictures. I travel a lot. <laughs> You're getting flued out. I'm not mad at no. you. So are you a foundational black American, dear? No. Well, no, where are you from? Where's your family from? Ohio. No, 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 no. Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> um, are there any immigrants in your family's lineage? No, right? not at all. Oh, okay. Oh, so you're a foundational black American? Yes. Okay, there you go. Okay, all right. I'm following you. All right, so, okay, so what's on your mind? Oh, nothing. I just came in to really just be a part of the conversation. Let's be a part of it. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, how old are you? 23. Okay. What do you do out there in Ohio? Uh, financial aid for Ohio State University. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bianca. It sounds like you just, you just up late waiting on niggas to call you. I don't know what you're trying to do. What? All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> what you trying to do? Viana here trying to get flued out again. Y'all here getting flued out. All right, Viana. Well, let's contribute to the conversation. All right. Lovely sister. Very cute foundational black American sister. Yeah, we're there. All right. Uh, let's see who we got here. A lot of folks here. This, um, come on, y'all raise your hand, family. Y'all want to get on? Who was this person here? Compton. Oh, let's get Jay in here. Right, let's get Jay. Jay, hop on in, brother. Hello. First of all, I'd like to say um, hello to all my FBA family. And uh, 
I'm from uh, California, and as everyone probably knows, uh, reparations is happening in California, and uh, talks about a Freedmen's Bureau being established also. Um, I also heard that other people in other states are actually doing their reparations in um, different forms and manners, but maybe California could be um, a model for you know, every other state. If we could have a Freedmen's Bureau that represents our people in every state, then, you know, I think that's the best way we could go. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jared. Respect, brother. Let's get um live. Live, hop on, brother. Yo. What's up, family? What's up, man? I just had a question. So, go ahead. Um, I know cash reparations is going to be like a, a big fight because white people are not benefiting from it. So I was wondering if, right. I was wondering if uh, business loan reparations would be another avenue that uh, we can go. Um, and business loans, no, we don't need a loan. No, 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 no I'm need... sorry, not, not a loan. I mean, just business reparations of just for to, to start a business. And, um, yeah, is that a, is, is, as I'm saying, is that an easier an easier avenue to get to? Okay, um, we don't want to go easy. No, let, let's stop all of this easy. See, w we got to get out this mentality where we have to present it to the white supremacists in a way that's not going to offend them. The hell with how they feel. I, I want black folks to get this mentality. We're talking about something that is old, and we got to stop acting nice about this shit. Black people got this thing. Well, let's go. Cash might offend them. They ain't going to want to go along with it. They don't want to go along with anything that's going to help us. Let's just get that clear. Anything that's going to help us, they don't want to go along with it. We don't go along with the benign neglect. That's the problem. Family, when our FBA ancestors were on those plantations, they were not nice to them. When they were selling the children, they were not nice to them. When they were beating them and raping them and working them from sun up to sundown and 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 chopping off their feet if they didn't produce enough work, they weren't being nice to our people. We don't owe them any niceties. Let's stop being afraid to say, hey, man, this is what it is. Y'all need to break bread. Family, they're not going to be comfortable with it. Here's the thing. Stop giving a damn. You have to use political operations like warfare. Politics is warfare. Go into the game thinking with a warfare mentality. When it comes to us, they tell black people, let's just sit down and have some black eyed peas and chicken wings. Y'all not going to get nothing, but let's just have a nice get old, good old get together and a turn up. And y'all sit around and want to play that game. Stop playing that game with them. We need to get some tangibles and we don't care if they like it or not. If they don't provide tangibles, we're not going to vote for them. We're not going to participate in the process. We're going to withhold our votes. We're better off not voting than to vote for nothing because we're voting to empower other people. We got to be very strict and disciplined with our voting strategies and non-voting strategies because not voting is a strategy. Them running around telling us we got to vote because your great great granddaddy died for you to vote now. So you got to do it. No. My great great granddaddy did not die for me to vote for nothing, and neither did yours. If we were to go back in time and talk to our grandparents and they asked us, hey, what's going on up there in the future? Well, great great granddad, what we're doing, we're voting in your honor. And your great great granddad is going to say, well, grandson, what are you voting for? Nothing. We're voting for you. And he's going to say, get your stupid ass up there. And demand something. I didn't get my ass whooped so that you can go up here voting for other immigrants to come over here and get all the stuff that I work for. That's what your great granddad would say. I did all this suffering and we out here getting lynched and I'm getting beat and y'all sitting up here letting immigrants come over here eating up all the shit that we built. 
You stupid fool. I raised an idiot. Your great great granddaddy would curse you out if you went back into time with that dumbass mentality. They didn't sit here and suffer for us to sit up here and let them use the resources for all of these other groups and we're sitting up here still singing Negro spirituals. That is not what our people wanted. Right now, think in terms if I my future great great grandchildren in the future came back and said, hey, great great granddad Tariq, we out here trying to represent you here in the future. I'd be like, what are you doing? And well, dad, great grand granddad, we out here singing. We we we're on Edmund Pettus Bridge, doing a march out here in the year three thousand. We they got a a virtual Edmund Pettus Bridge that we're on. I'll be like, get your dumb ass back to the future, and get out my face. Don't ever come back to the past to come visit me. Get off my lawn, little nigga. I would run them back to the future. Get off my lawn with your dumb ass. I didn't raise no fool. Somebody made a wrong turn somewhere in the bloodline. I don't want nothing to do with you niggas. You understand? We got to be very strategic and we have to understand what our ancestors wanted. They didn't want us to be out here dumbing out the way we're dumbing out in the political arena right now. I promise you they don't want that. You talk to some of your ancestors, they're like, John Lewis, I didn't fuck with him. <laughs> John Lewis, go back to the future and get your mind together. Let's see who we got here. Let's get Nikki. Let me get Nikki in here. We've got a lot of ladies popping up. I'm going to get Nikki, then Pretty Vibrations. Oh, let me get Khalid. Wait, before Nikki, before I get you, let me get Khalid. I got Khalid up here. Khalid, hop on, brother. Well, peace, fine, peace, and how you doing, Tariq? I'm good, man. What's on your mind, brother? Yeah, I had a, I had a political question. Um, bro, I'm I'm, um, I'm from Baltimore. I'm I'm, I'm B1, but um, I was thinking about a few conversations. Uh, I think I was listening to a show you had about identifying uh, local politicians, and um, that that could uh, you know possibly give us tangibles or whatever. And um, I had two candidates that came in mind. It was one guy he's going against Jim Clyburn in South Carolina, and there's another guy. I forget both of their names, but there's another guy here in Louisiana. He was a bit he he, he seemed more pro establishment. The other guy in South Carolina seemed like he's talking reparations. But uh, oh, Marcel, you're talking about my brother Marcel. Marcel, yeah. yeah. What about him? Yeah, that's what they yeah, were that's supporting that's Marcel. Marcel. Okay, okay, okay. So. Yeah, that was my other thought. Uh, any other candidates in other states that, uh, because I'm in I'm in Maryland, I'm in Baltimore a lot. Oh, much right, all Thank you, brother. Let me get some more people, brother. I don't know where you're going. You're all over the place. Nikki, hop on, dear. Come on, brother. Yes, hello. Hey, Nikki, thank you for having me. I'm fine. And yourself? I'm good. And what what city are you in, Nikki? I'm in Houston, Texas. There you go. Now, what's on your mind? I just want to say, pay attention to your legislation, Houston. I mean, well, let's say Texas, Louisiana, Virginia, Mississippi. Uh, let's just think about Arizona. Uh, look at all the bills and <laughs> the legislation that's coming out of these states in the past couple of weeks. They are not for us. They are not. They are not trying to pretend like they're meant for us. They are even the police. Think about the police. Even nowadays, they have cameras on them, and they are. Still getting away with our bodies, right? Like, what the right. fuck do you? What do you think is next? What do you really actually think is next? Because I know what I see is next, and it's our extermination. Mm -hmm. They are not fucking around, y'all. It is in the news every day, and we are blind because we are looking at our phones and we are paying attention to all the other spaces that make us feel comfortable. But think about it, guys. This shit ain't meant for us. It never was. Ain't shit changed except civility. We have civil rights. We don't have equal rights. There you go. Thank you so much, beloved. So now what we got to do, man, we got to focus on us. This is why we have to focus on us. We have to let them know we are in a state of emergency. We cannot go along with any of the policies that these politicians are throwing our way. 
They're letting us get buried out here. They're letting the police do whatever. They're letting these other groups come in and undermine us. These immigrant groups, they're undermining us. They're driving down our wages, driving down our unemployment, driving down our um, school rates that we, we, we can't get the loans that we need because the loans are getting eaten up by these immigrant groups. We can't tolerate this stuff and we got to stop supporting it. The reason why it's going on is because black folks, we're still sitting up here voting for people and we're allowing it to happen. And they're telling us we got to vote for the lesser of the evil. No, 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 no. You're better off just not voting all together if they're not going to put anything on the table. That's tangible. Now, I say you always vote in the, the local elections. You do that. But when it comes to the big elections, if they're not bringing any tangibles, man, we got to be strategic about what we do. Pretty V, hop in, dear. Hey, Tariq, how you doing? I'm good. How are you, man? What city are you in? I'm in Augusta, Georgia. I've been following you for a while. <laughs> oh, I love uh, it. Yes, yes. Um, and so it's like for me, um, I'm actually I know, um, like I said, I've been following you for a while, like since I was in my twenties. I'm in my thirties now. <laughs> okay. But but um, you know, I'm actually very interested in um in pursuing a political career and you know what, I I'm a veteran. Um, and that's what kind of got me interested in it. Um, I am a little uh radical, so I kind of feel like I have to clean myself up a little bit. But also too, I know that people um well these different states, they have their own forms of reparations that they're kind of trying to spoon feed us um yeah. as a community. And I really don't agree with it. And I just want to know what your A, what is your what is your take on um, states wanting to do this individual? Because I personally don't agree because I feel like then on a federal level or the national level, it'll it'll make, you know, the government become more hands off. Well, hey, turn your states for, you know, your your reparations or, you know, whatever the case may be and kind of take the responsibility off of them. And do you think, you know, do you think reparations is something that should start from the state level and then up to the federal level? Or do you think it should be in reverse from the federal level down to the state level? And that's my first question. My second question is, what do you what do you suggest for someone like me Um who I'm I'm still fairly young. I'm not 35 yet. I'm fairly young. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm still, you know, I'm old enough where, you know, I definitely think that I would be able to kind of add something to the political table for yeah. my generation and for my younger generation um that's right up under me. And so um I've been in a couple of democratic think pools and they don't really talk about too much of anything. I kind of get tired of the same old talk about, you know, the the typical democratic um right. talking point. And so what do you think for someone who may be considered radical? Because I have people in my local city that they kind of push me, hey, you should run for politics. You should. And I'm kind of like, I don't know, because I don't have the cleanest record. <laughs> now, I mean, I have a clean record, but like as far as like um, the way that I could present myself, because I am very passionate about right. the black community and I'm not one of those people that that want to be bought out. But my city, um, you know, the masters are held here every year. Uh, we have a big medical college here and that's kind of what makes the city go around. And it's ran by a lot of black people like and it has been for years. Like we have a black mayor. Uh, police chief, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, they're still kind of like puppets. And so um, for me, that's, the money is what pushes our local politicians. And so for someone like me, who is who is a little more edgy, a little more radical, how do you think someone like, like, like me could get a start in um, the political field? Yeah. Now, first, for the first question, now, as far as the, the state of federal reparations, it can go either or. With the states, that kind of sets a precedent for the federal. And if we get federal reparations, that's good altogether. So when these states are doing these different reparations conversations, we have to stay on top of them to make sure they don't turn reparations into a catch-all, lift-all boats program that's going to help everybody and it's a big nothing burger. So it's important for us to stay on the case as far as these local reparations conversations. Now, as far as running, I think that's a very good idea. You need to hit me up, email me so we can talk about some strategies because um, we're putting together something where we're going to have candidates all around the country run. And it's best to run as an independent. Don't commit to any party. Run as an independent. We get people set up to run as an independent and we're going to put reparations as the main talking point.
We need to get as many people around the country running and running on a reparations program specifically for foundation of black Americans. Um, None of that immigration talk. We're going to be very, very specific about us. And if we get enough people in political arenas around the country beating that drum, it will start to trickle up and create a wave. So we have to take control of that narrative from the grassroots. That's why you need to hit me up. There's some other people in the room that I'm working with now, and we're starting to organize that now. So hit me up, email me so we can start for real, for real, having a real conversation about some strategies and getting you prepared if you're serious about stepping into the arena. And it's good to start on a lot of these city councils, which are easy to get on. And, and it, we put some push behind you. There's a high chance that you would actually win. Even if you don't win, just getting the messaging out there is important. So we're going to win either way. We're going to get we're going to win by getting the messages out there on different local fronts. We definitely need people in Texas. We need people in Georgia. We need more people in the South Carolina area. I was talking to my, to my sister Teslin the other day, who's a political strategist, and she was letting me know how um it's important to get people out there in South Carolina who's um, politically on board. So again, hit me up. Yeah, so South Carolina is very racist. I, I live right yeah. on the border there. I mean, it's horrible there. It's horrible. Yeah, but that's a big political area. That's a very important political area strategically. A lot of stuff politically happens in South Carolina. So that's something that we got to discuss. So we'll, we'll chop it up, dear. But thank you for the call, beloved. All right. Let's see. Um, who's, who's this person here? Um, there's a lot of folks on here. Um, oh, he's a cute little kid on here. Okay, let's get... Um, hold on. Uh, let's get physical. Physical Bitcoin art. All right. Physical Bitcoin art. you know i'm i'm a how would i say this you know i'm caucasian a white man a white a white man right? yes i'm a white, a white man, man and i i've been um you know an observant of a lot of things that have happened in the you know the past few years and everything that's been going on and i feel like really you know i understand like where you're coming from and your position and everything that's been going on And, you know, with everyone that's involved with what is happening, but, you know, I just, I don't understand also, like, you know, I'm trying to comprehend how it is, is that, like, you know, you differentiate that, you know, I feel like everybody is dealing with a a real crisis in many ways, or like a real you know, character identification or, you know, um, you know, not just whether it's white, whatever, whatever color you are, everyone is equally being, you know, suppressed by the government that we live in right now. Uh, you know, not true, not true. And I mean, well, real not- quick, let me, let me finish real quick because the government that is existent at this point you know, is is completely reducing and inflating everything that everyone, you know, exists within, that we are all affected as one people, as one individual, you know, in all ways. Not true. And you Not can't true. just say that because you're black that you deserve reparations. This is ridiculous. Oh this is, Here it is this is not okay and i completely disagree as a individual of every way of life of freedom and okay. i respect okay, you guys wait, in wait, all wait, ways i respect wait, wait, wait. all life okay I, i'll stop okay let's come bob calm down now, yep, the, the real truth on out so you don't think black people, foundational black Americans, should get reparations? Why? Um, because I, it, it's not just why. It's not just right now, or it's it's that everyone deserves some type of, you know, 
what has been happening on Earth for the past hundred years or the past not talking about what on earth what happened here in our government the united states of america i'm talking about that sir yeah well you, that's what people need to realize was, nobody else was treated like nobody else was treated like foundational black americans in any sense of the word sir well as far as right? i understand and excuse my ignorance if i'm wrong um you know everyone has been you know treat it extremely wrong in many ways over the past thousands of years, hundreds of years. I'm talking and it's about due to a group. United hold on, government. hold on, hold on. It's due to a group of individuals that control this entire world and they've created a division and they want people to divide and conquer. They want people to, you know, act like they deserve more than someone else. And it's not... That's who they're called, and that's, that's who I that's need not, my money. No, I, man, that's not what I'm talking about, brother. That's exactly who. Who else controls the world besides white supremacists? There, whether it is white supremacists or not, they control the world. The white supremacists do. Um, I, I don't think they're just white. They're, they're they they do not define color. They don't care what color oh, you yes, are. They, they will kill you regardless and they will target you and they want you fucking dead. You know? They're not targeting white people in mass. I disagree. They want everyone due to the 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 way that things have happened in the past few years. White people are not being targeted in mass. In any sense of the word here in the United States, sir, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the Illuminati, the the individual oh, that actually God. really control God. the world. God. That makes sense. Oh, and not the Illuminati. Well, not just God. the Illuminati, the, the gray men, uh, the individuals that have controlled the world before oh, Christ. The reptilian human, are you doing the reptilian human? No, 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 no. I'm not going that far. And I the apologize. I, I'm not. Listen. Oh God, Tariq. God, Tariq. I, I I really appreciate your your time and allowing me to speak here. I I really really do, and I'm not trying to. Who are the gray, who are the gray men? So are you <laughs> talking about the extraterrestrials who meet in Switzerland in a submarine? With no, the no, 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 no. I mean. Who are the gray men, sir? The the gray men are individuals that are actually immortals that have lived on Earth for a long time. And have a good day, sir. Thank you so much. Let me get another. I'm not going to do reptilian humanoid talk. Here they go. It's never the white supremacists. It's always somebody else. Oh, I'm not about to play that game. Oh, it's not white supremacy. It's the Jews. If they they're gonna blame the Jews. They can't blame. It's the reptilian humanoids. Somebody was talking that earlier in another space. They were talking about the damn reptilian humanoids who are really running things, and the twelve bloodlines of the Illuminati. And it's the gray men. They're immortals from another planet. The hell out of here. It's white supremacists. I'm not trying to hear an episode of Sonic the Damn Hedgehog. It's white supremacists who's running things and controlling things. All right. It's not Thor or the damn Avengers. They get to talking goofy. When, notice when we start talking about our reparations, look how stupid they start talking. They always do this. They can't logically refute why we need our money. They know we need our money, so they have to start talking ridiculous. I'm not going to give you no reparations, dude. It's He-Man and Thor and the Hulk. They owe you. They're the ones who's really running it. It's Professor X and the X-Men. They owe you because they really run the Earth. Stop it. No. Tell the reptilian humanoid, I'm looking for your ass. I'm looking for the white supremacist. If I see a Martian come down, I'm going to hop in the spaceship and I'm going to have him take me to the white supremacist house to get my money. E.T., use your finger to take me to Washington, D.C. I need to holler at Biden. 
That's what I'm going to use E.T. for. Use your finger on his ass. I'm going to hear about no damn gray man. Don't stop it. Yo ass is the gray man. Oh, goodness. Lord, Lord, Lord. I'm not playing this game with y'all. All right, let's get... Um, Let's get one more. God, they, they, they wear me out, boy. These white supremacist suspects. I don't be having the energy, man, to hear that babble. Y'all better just come up with my paper. And I ain't being nice about it. So he 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 tried to be kind of cordial at first, and then he got the the white supremacist slipped out. Listen, dude. Well, you know, man. You know, we, we're all one people, dude. And um, you know, I love everybody, dude. I had a buddy. We went to Vietnam with man. He, we shared some some cornbread one day, dude. And you know, I'm not giving no fucking reparations to your black ass, dude. But anyway, man, it's the reptilians who really owe you the money, brother. Oh, shut up! He's all over the place. He couldn't even contain the mayonnaise madness. Well, he had a racist Tourette's moment. Did you catch that? The racism came out real heavy. <laughs> That racism came right on out of him. Oh, there you go. That's what I want to hear. Then he tried to reel it back. You know, hey, bro, we're all one, dude. I dated a black girl in college. I used to buy her weaves and everything. So I don't know. You guys are fucking thing, buddy. Fucking niggers. I don't know you nothing, dude. But listen, man, it's the gray men in the Game of Thrones, dude. They're the ones who really owe you, buddy. Man, come on, dude. Come on. <laughs> Stop it. A lot of folks are him. Via, girl, you take your ass to bed, Via. I see you up here. You, you know you're about to get flued out in the morning somewhere. You go to bed, Via. <laughs> All right, let's get this guy. Let's get Baby Goat in here. Baby goat, hop in seven seven. Baby goat. Hello. Okay. Well, sound like he's working late night at the Amazon warehouse. All right, calling on your lunch break. Let's get a I am clutch with it. I am clutch with it. That's his name. I am clutch with it. All right, I am clutch with it. Hop on, brother. Where you at, man? Come on, bro. All right, you gonna turn your microphone on? All right, let's try somebody else. Um, come on, y'all get it together. All right, let's get um, who else we got it here? A lot of folks in here. All right, let's get, well, raise your hand. Let's see who's here. Let's get um, Jaquil. Let's get Jaquil in here. Jaquil, hop on, brother. Jaquil, hop on in. Peace, peace, y'all. What's going on? What's up, family? How are you? I'm sir? doing good. It's funny you, you said the, the dude that was at Amazon. I'm actually at work right now. I just got off. But um, I just want to... Um, just answer your question, and if I can, I want to ask a question afterwards. Um, to answer the question, man, it's it's about it's about inclusion. You know, we want allies. We really don't have that. You know, I would say we got to realize we don't have our allies, but we know that. We just got to start acting like it. And um, at the end of the day, like you and other brothers and sisters say, it's it's about us. It's and it's about time that we you know we do our thing to get ours. It's been overdue, centuries long overdue, you know? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm, thank you so much, brother. Much respect to you. Shout out to Brother Jackson. All right, let's get let's get a couple of more people in here because we're going to have to wrap this thing up, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to be on here too, too late. Throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care if you want to get on because we've got a lot of folks on in here tonight and Y'all be keeping me in here late. Let's get um derelict in here. Derelict. Let's get derelict in here. Derelict, hop on in, brother. And chop up game and let us know what's on your mind, player. Hello. What's up, derelict? Hey, not much, man. How you doing? 
I'm good. What city are you in from? What, what city are you from? Uh, Louisville, Kentucky. There you go. Now, you're a Caucasian man. What are you? I am Caucasian, yes. There you go. My man. So, what's on your mind? Uh, not really a whole lot. Uh, I just want to say I was in uh, whatever federal prison for about 18 months, and there was a lot of black guys in there. Or and Yeah, and they, all of them were there for extremely long periods of time. Guys with just like two or three, you know, convictions for crack or whatever back in the 1998 or whenever were there for like 20 years. Yeah. And, you know, here I am white and I only got 18 months for some bullshit thing. So there's definitely a lot of bias. Oh, yeah. You can't, yeah, you can't I, lie about anything. But the- all, uh, it, was, it was an interesting experience anyway. It was, right. it was very interesting. Uh, it was, uh, yeah. There you they're, go. They're, they're, they're right, screwing man, over right. a lot of people. Yeah, that's how they get you to not be able to vote. Luckily, they finally let felons vote, I guess. But yeah, anyway, right. that's all. All right. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. We know. Yeah, I know. I got a good friend of mine down in Georgia. They just let him out after 18 years over some drug charges, man. Just let my dude out. So yeah, yeah, I already know. I know what goes on. We know the deal. We know what's happening with it. All right, should I get one more call for the family? Can I get one more call? Should I get one more? All right, let me try one more. I always say I'm going to do one more because I, I enjoy talking and chopping up with the family. What are you going to do? All right, let's get, um. hold on, let's get um. Jonathan Utez in. Jonathan Utez. Let's get Jonathan. What's up, Jonathan? Rick, how are you, man? I'm good, Jonathan. Now, Jonathan, you're Latino. What are you, brother? Uh, yeah, half Latino. Half Latino. What's the other half? White, European. I guess. There you go. Some mix. Okay. So, so I so white, white and white. All right. Yeah. Uh, no. I'm sure there's. I don't know. Maybe seventy percent. If you had the whatever the conquistadors did. But uh, I had a question. Now, what part of what part of what, what part of South America is your family from? Say that again. What part of South America is your family from? My mom's Bolivian. She's Libyan? Bolivian. Bolivian. Okay, my okay. Yeah. Bolivia. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what's on your mind? So I was I was kind of curious. I, I bounce around both spaces and I see that you get a lot of like um I don't know what you want to call them, like right wing kind of interaction. And there sometimes was, I do, yeah. You know. you, do you ever see, like, any points of agreeance with those guys? Or is it just, with like... The with the sorry. Um, You know, what's it with... You say, do I see a point of agreement with the, the white... The right-wingers, rather? Yeah, yeah. And, and, like, specifically the more, like, I guess, kind of, like, racist ones. Like, do you see, like... Or I want to say racist, but, like, the, the... Like, more tilted to white supremacy... Do you ever see any sort of like common cause with them, or do you more like uh, I see them agree with you on things like immigration, um, you know, American issues specifically? I guess to immigration, not like globally. But I'm I'm curious if like what's if you could kind of like talk more about. Do you talk to them more for just entertainment, or what is that? Well, the thing is, they call up in our spaces. Usually, you know, they just hop in our spaces and kind of interject their views. But um, as far as their ideologies, these people believe in white supremacy. That's their primary ideology, and I definitely don't agree with that. Um, if you look at certain peripheral things, you can agree with people on many basic things, but that doesn't mean I gel with their ideology. Like me, let, let's be very clear, and I've said this many times, I'm a pretty conservative person. Many black people are actually very conservative because black people have been on this land longer than any other group. So a lot of our views are based on traditional values and and customs and culture, um, cultural relevance. 
we have been told that in order to get rid of racism, we have to do new things. So we always go new directions, even though we're conservative. We still want to try new things because we're being subjugated nonstop by the white supremacists. And the white supremacists are on the right and the left. Let's be very clear. So whoever group we agree with in the dominant society, both sides are white supremacist. And that's the problem. We are in a position where we're being told to choose from the lesser of each evil white supremacist. The conservative, the, the right wing white supremacists, they present their racism on their sleeve. They say, hey, look, we don't want you in our neighborhoods. This is who we are. The left wing white supremacists, they say, yeah, we don't want you in our neighborhoods either, but we'll get together and we can go to the gay clubs together but you got to go back to your segregated neighborhoods. So it's the same racism, but the, the, the left wingers, they present their racism in a different way. Now, as far as the practicality of it, the right wing white supremacists, they lean towards more conservatism, which is what we lean towards as black people. But that doesn't mean that we agree with their views. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. That does actually. It's actually a very good answer. Uh, now, now, you politically are you more conservative or are you more liberal? More conservative. Got I grew it. up uh, liberal, then just kind of over the years more conservative. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I did a lot of construction in the South, stuff like that. Okay, so, so now Georgia, let me ask you this. Okay, so let me ask you this: Do you agree that foundational Black Americans should get reparations? Yeah, I do. Uh, oh. But that, that has to be, let's be clear, though. Foundational black Americans mean we, we need to, like, clarify what that means. And I, 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 I know what a foundational black American does because I follow you. But I think the broader country has to understand what that is. And I also want to just and I think this is you, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But I think it was Usman, Dr. Usman who said the fact that uh, the black community needs nets or like they need uh, to, to close the nets. So if reparations was to happen, there needs to be, you know, something that's like that. That money is not just going to go into the hands of, and I'm not trying to sound offensive here, but it's not going to go into the hands of, you know, like Koreans. Uh, if someone owns like, you know, a corner shop, it needs to stay in that community so that wealth can stay there. So that's, I'm, I'm all on board for that. Right. And yeah, it, it's very clear what a foundational black American is. It's a person who's not an immigrant, a person who didn't come from, a, from an immigrant background, a person who descended from slaves in America, people who are descended from the freemen. So that's a very clear definition of what um, a foundational black American is. So that wouldn't be that hard to establish. And what's, what's interesting, a lot of um, many conservative white people actually say they agree with us getting reparations. There's a lot of these liberal, so-called liberal ones are the ones who are so vehemently against it. That's very interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what that is. But yeah, I appreciate the clear response. And uh, again, I like how you go head to head with people. No so, doubt. Thank you for uh, that. Great content, thank, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, have y'all noticed that? I, I've noticed you have a lot of these right wing people who will call up and if you just chop it up with them, they'll be like, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, I believe you should get reparations. They ain't really tripping on it, but notice it's the, the so-called liberal acting. I, I went to college with a black dude. I'm, I'm, my best friend is black. And then you say something about reparations. Hey, what about reparations? Hell freaking no, dude. They're the ones who flip out over reparations. Very interesting. That's a very interesting thing. Okay, but listen here, man. We got a lot of folks in here. It's one o'clock in the morning out here in LA. I appreciate everybody tuning in. I think we had a pretty good conversation on tonight's broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm going to be up out of here. Go get my book, man. Y'all want some good game, some real good game? Get my book, Foundational Black American Race Beta on Amazon. Y'all get that right now on Amazon. Very, very good book, ladies and gentlemen. Also, y'all go to my YouTube channel and type in Tariq Radio. A lot of good game. I did an earlier broadcast chopping up some game about what's happening out here in Los Angeles. 
Also, the other day I did an interview with Bill Cosby's um, spokesperson, Brother Andrew Wyatt. I saw him earlier today, too. Good brother. Good, solid brother. You're going to hear a lot of different perspectives on the Bill Cosby situation that you've never heard before. Go to my YouTube channel and check that interview out, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Other than that, man, you guys have a great, prosperous weekend, ladies and gentlemen. And in the words of our foundational black American elders, using the FBA Tut language, I bid you a papiakute and a lilavave to the family. Y'all be good.